All right, so let's take a look at this problem. This problem is called binary tree in order traversal. So generally for these types of problems, you just need to be familiar with the different ways to traverse a binary tree. And then once you get used to it, it should be pretty simple to traverse it in different ways. So for n order, it means that you're just going to start on the left side and then work your way to the right side. So let's take a look at this example. If your root is one uh, and you were to start going down the left side, there is no left side. So once you complete the left side for in order, your next step would be the root. So that's why one is pr printed next. And then after that, you're gonna traverse all the way to the bottom of the right side and start going left to right on the right side. And that's why three, then two. Looking at the next one, you have a left side, no right side. So as I was saying, you're gonna start going down to the farthest end of the left side first. So you have two, then one. That's exactly what you're seeing as the designated output. And then again, on this one, there's no left side. So you're gonna go all the way to the right side uh, after you visit the root. So you visit the root first, which is one, and then the right side is two, and there's nothing else over here. So one and then two. So how do you do this? One of the easiest ways to really do depth first traversal in a binary tree is just using recursion. There is other ways to do this with uh, less space complexity, but I would say in an interview or anytime somebody asks you this question, it's unlikely that you're going to be expected to use the new method. So depth first search should be just fine for this one. And for this problem, we know that the number of nodes in the tree is in a range of zero to 100 and the values are between negative 100 and 100. So basically we don't have to worry about any kind of crazy inputs that would cause our function to fail. Otherwise you could do a bunch of different checks to make sure you're not having any invalid input. But based on that, we should be good. So uh, we'll actually skip putting this part first. So let's just go ahead and write our depth, uh, depth first function. So on our depth first function, uh, you know, they're expecting us to return a list. What we can do is we can pass that list into our function and then just manipulate that list and add values to it during our recursion calls. So we'll just say this is our result list. And then we also want to know what node it is that we are currently looking at while we're traversing it in this depth first function. Also, I need to cover what is being returned. In this case, we can just make it void because like I said, we're going to edit this list that we're passing in and it will automatically update uh, that list that will come from this main function we're calling it from. So now with depth first functions, uh, basically you're going to start checking to see if there's a left and then a right. And we also wanna make sure that the node is not equal to null. So if it is not equal to null, then we can actually do something. So if it's not equal to null, let's then jump to that left node first to make sure that we get all the way to the farthest left point, and then we're gonna work our way to the right. So then if node.left, is not equal to null, then we're going to depth first search on that left side. And also, I almost forgot, we need to pass in our list that we're carrying from function to function. And the same thing is going to happen for the right side. If we have the right side, we want to make sure that we traverse to it as well after the left side. Now here's the part that you can kind of see vary whenever you're doing problems like this is whether or not you want to print certain notes in certain order. So they might change it up on you and say like, instead of, you know, a typical traversal, maybe they would expect you to go to the left side, but then pr uh, print the right node before the left node, things like that. So just keep in mind that whenever you have variations of that, just get used to how you could change the order of how a node would be printed or stored. So in this case, with the standard depth first uh, traversal, it is that we want to take that left node first and add it to our list. So if the left node is not null and it goes all the way to the far left, after it gets to, let's say this part, it will have added this node in. It's going to say the left and the right are null, but when it says that the left is null, it's immediately going to then add this value to our list, and then it will try to add the right into a recursion, but it can't because there is no right. And then it's gonna go up here. And then when the one had added itself in right here into our recursion, before it ends up going and checking the right side, 
that's when it's going to add itself into our list. So res.add, and then we're just going to say node.val. Because as you can see here, uh, if you didn't see this before, tree node or you know whatever the class may be that you're using to build your binary tree is defined here. So it's very important that if you had an interview or something like that, you'd ask, is there a class defined or do I need to define a class? But in this case on leak code, you could see it's defined here with all of its attributes left and right, as well as the integer values is dot val. So we add that val to our list and then the rest will take care of itself. So when the right node gets added, if there's no other nodes after it, when it comes back out of the recursion, it will essentially end up calling itself to add to the list once it adds this uh, node.write in. So to come in, it'll say it's not null, maybe there's no left on it, and then it's gonna add itself uh, to the list. So after you have populated the list, all you have to do now is you have to initialize a list that you can store all these values in. So we'll just call result equals new array list. And then we're going to pass it into the function, as I said earlier, so DFS res, and then we want to pass in our root function. So our root node, not function, root node is basically going to be just the node they give us. If it happened to be null, we're fine because at that point you had this null check. And then when you return the uh, result list, it's going to be empty. So you're fine. So now after we've finished our recursion, everything has been updated. We just return our result list and that's it. So let's go ahead and submit this code. As you can see, it was accepted. And considering the fact that you could potentially at worst follow all the way down the left side, you could have at worst n elements that have to be stored in memory because you have to go all the way down to the far left. So because that is the worst case, your, uh, your space complexity would be big O of n and your time complexity is also going to be big O of n because you have to iterate through every single node in the, the uh, binary tree in order to complete this problem. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And if there's any questions you want to see in the future, please also let me know. Please take a moment to like and subscribe for future content. Thank you.